Have you ever wanted to play every Mortal Kombat character pre-2006? Well, Mortal Kombat Armageddon is that game. Look, Game Informer Magazine issue 102 clearly states, nothing would cap off our excitement like access to all Mortal Kombat fighters and, well, Midway delivered. Starting off, we get a chaotic cinematic introduction showcasing almost every Mortal Kombat fighter fighting to reach the top of a pyramid, and I couldn't imagine a better way to start this game off. Just look at Liu Kang snapping his neck back. How crazy is that? This new menu is pretty cool. Every time you visit, you'll see a different character in the background and their counterpartner's up close face. Now, there's about five game modes, a first ever character creation section, and some pretty sweet extras. Now, before we jump into the game modes, I have to talk about one of the best features in this game. You could get lost in the character creation section for hours. I bet it was incredible playing online, seeing people's different creations. You can really change so much from your appearance, your fighting style, your weapon style, your special moves, voices, and even your own character bio. Look, I made freaking Gandalf. Moving over into arcade mode, you get smacked in the face with 60 characters. Like, wow, that's a bit overwhelming. Once you spent an hour deciding on who to play, you start at the top and move down to the bottom with the intro cinematic pyramid in the background with Blaze's fiery self waiting for you to complete the tower so he could face off with you mano a mano. Comparing the tower to Deception and Deadly Alliance, it's hands down the best. And it's funny, the first time I played the tower, I didn't know once you get to the top of the tower and beat it, you get transported to the top of the pyramid to fight Blaze, and I was not expecting that surprise. Now, after hours of playing, it's no secret that a step back was taken. The three fighting styles and combo chains in Deception far outweighs Armageddon's. Looking at the combo list, 15 are basic attacks, with some characters having no more than two or three combo sets, and the other 18 moves are all in the air. Not sure why they made such a heavy focus on air combat rather than regular long chain attacks, and what's up with the impels? One of the coolest features in Deception was taking Sub-Zero's sword and thrusting it into the opponent's gut, thus activating the dot effect. Now, Conquest Mode has definitely developed into something new. I was expecting to have the events from Deception pick up and lead into this, but unfortunately, there was none of that. You start off as Tavin, Mortal Kombat's newest story hero, who is quest with competing against his brother in order to retrieve a weapon created by his parents in order to defeat Blaze, a fire spawn created by the Elder Gods to stop Armageddon. So don't expect to pick up as shoot Jinko because his foolish ass lost his hero gig. Oh, and no more trips to the Nexus because we now have a fire dragon creating portals. I will say they did a good job moving back and forth from the RPG style of fighting that we've seen in Shaolin Monks to the traditional side-by-side -side fighting. Now, one of the great things from Deception conquest was the ability to run around and explore freely in return finding cool little easter eggs and unlockables but in armageddon it's a very linear playstyle. collectibles just show up in front of you and there's no room for exploration kind of a bummer and you do run into this snow monster a few times that i want to play as so bad he just looks terrifying just look at that blood on him motor combat is up there with chess combat this game mode could easily turn into its own game if it wanted to you get some basic maps and a handful of characters and it's pretty much a simple Mario Kart game, but with your added fatalities that we all love and enjoy. The big downside here is they really didn't add anything to complement your profile. What I mean by that is they could have made each level locked and you could have need to come in first place each time to unlock following levels and characters and even different abilities. Could you imagine you create a character with his own custom motor cart? That would have been so lit. But I digress, as it is fun, and it's just an extra little thing they threw in, so I can't really complain about it. It does feel repetitive at times, but in that time period of release, I could have seen myself playing this over and over with friends and family. Entering the crypt, there lacked a sense of creepiness that you felt in Deadly Alliance and Deception. Not only that, but all sense of mystery has been dissolved because, well, you could pan around and take your pick of items to unlock. Want a new skin? Browse the game content wall. Interested in concept art? Pick what sketch or render you like to see interested in tunes bloopers and concept trailers there's a wall for that too hell you can even check out mocap once you burn through all your coins just head on back to the tower and get some more pretty much a wash and repeat you can blow all your coins in the crypt or you can blow them all in the create a character either way you're going to be grinding for a few hours nonetheless now this game did come out just a month prior to the release of the playstation 3 and a year after 
the Xbox 360, which is kind of bizarre to release this on a sinking ship, you know, but you, you got to have respect for it, like the captain of the Titanic. Anyway, I'd give this a solid 7.0 out of 10, because if I was going back to the PlayStation 2 to play a Mortal Kombat game, it's probably going to be Deception. I'd love to know what you think of Armageddon.